Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are making delicious caramel sauce. When we say caramel, we think of so many types of caramel and mainly I think it's categorized with three types. One is hard caramel, like crunchy caramel. And second is chewy caramel, like caramel candy. And third is liquid caramel, like caramel sauce. And specifically today, we are going to learn caramel sauce. And there are basically two ways to make caramel sauce. One way is to add water and sugar and heat them up together and the other way is not to add water at all and just heat sugar only. This actually confused me when I just started baking because overall it just gave me more questions. So today I'm going to share how to make caramel sauce with the two ways step by step. So let's get started. All right, so these are the ingredients for today. We use sugar, heavy cream, water, butter, salt, and vanilla beans. You can also use vanilla extract instead or just omit it. So these are the ingredients for wet caramel and today I'm comparing it with and without butter so that you can see the difference. And for dry caramel just omit water from here and all the other amounts are exactly same. And I will also compare it with and without butter. And my very first step for boss methods is to prepare a clean pot because any liquid or impurity can affect the results. Okay, so to make dry caramel, first add sugar in the pot and scrape off the vanilla beans gently so that the brown part does not come off. Add that to the heavy cream in advance and we're gonna heat it up. I usually add the vanilla pot in the cream also, but there's a small chance that the caramel can spill out when you add that to hot caramel. So today we are adding it separately. So we want to add hot heavy cream in the caramel. So warm it up with your timing and I cut up my butter into smaller pieces. Once you prepare all the ingredients and tools, turn on the heat. Heat with medium heat. And you do not need to move the pot or mix the sugar until the caramelization starts happening because when you touch too early, the sugar sticks a lot more to a spatula and all around the edges of the pot and it's just harder to take them off later. So you can leave it for now. And once you see that sugar starts melting from the edges, pay close attention. And once you see that it started caramelizing slightly, turn down to low heat quickly so that the caramelization process happens more slowly. And then blend the caramel and sugar like this. The caramelization always start from the edges, from the edges toward the center. So blend caramel and sugar inward like this. And when I mix, I try not to let the sugar touch the edges since it can stick there and it'll be harder to take it off later. Heating with low heat at this point is a key because if you heat with high heat at this point, you might not be able to catch up with the caramelization process and your caramel might get too dark by the time you melt all the sugar. So once I see caramelization on edges, I turn it down to low heat. Now, if you see small pieces of sugar at this point, mix more and let it melt. You can also crush it like this. And once it turns into nice amber color and everything is melted, I remove from heat. Add vanilla pot and about one third of hot heavy cream right away. No need to let them brand evenly here. Add the last of heavy cream once they are blended lovely. It is important to add heavy cream while the caramel is fluid and extremely hot before it starts getting hardened. And also make sure that your heavy cream is very hot so that it does not harden the caramel. Today I heat it with a microwave while I was heating the sugar, but if you feel nervous doing so, you can heat it ahead. Once they are lovely mixed, heat it up one more time, add salt here. No need to heat for a long time. Once you see that all the caramel is melted and it looks nice and smooth, it is done. Right after it's made, you'll see a lot of bubbles like this, but soon it'll come down and turns into a shiny sauce. Keep in mind that caramel sauce gets hotter when the temperature goes down. Here are the textures at each temperature. So depending on what you like to use it for, you can adjust the temperature. When you add butter to this caramel sauce, you can do so when you heat it up one last time after you added heavy cream. And this is how the dry caramel with butter looks like. 
by adding butter, the caramel gets slightly thinner when it's hot and slightly firmer when it's cold, and the flavor gets slightly more mild. But the difference is very minor if you add a small amount of butter. And now let's move on to wet caramel. First, add water and sugar. Now I like to shake my pot like this to spread sugar flat so that the syrup cooks up evenly. And brush water all around the edges to wash off any sugar sticking to the edges to prevent sugar from getting crystallized. And once you prepare all the ingredients, heat it up at medium-high heat. I personally like to heat with medium-high heat first because compared to dry caramel, wet caramel takes a lot longer time for the caramelization to start happening. So to fasten the process a little bit, I do medium-high heat instead of medium heat. And this is important, do not touch the pot or sugar at all and also do not remove the pot from heat at all once you turn on the heat. This is crucial, especially after the syrup starts thickening because when the heated syrup cools down, the sugar crystallization can happen. So the best thing is to just leave it alone until it starts caramelizing. At this point, you can hear that bubbling sound is high and loud. So that means caramelization does not happen in a minute yet. I usually brush the sides one or two times on the way to wash off any sugar that might start getting crystallized. Or you can also place a lid on top for the same effect. The steams drop on the side and wash them off. I personally just use the brush method only because I'm just used to it more. Now hear the sound. It sounds lower and more quiet than earlier. Once it sounds like this, it means the syrup is much thicker now and caramelization is happening in short time. So that's when I turn down the heat just slightly to medium heat. Now don't leave and pay close attention from here. Here the color started to change slightly. As soon as you see the light caramelization started happening all over or partially, turn down the heat to low heat, just like the dry caramel. And at the same time, as soon as you see that light caramelization, turn your pot 360 degree like this to even out the color so that you can judge the color correctly. Keep doing this as you heat until you reach the color you want. When you keep heating with medium heat, it'll get dark very quick. It is very important to slow down the caramelization process so that you will not accidentally caramelize the sugar too much. Now this light amber color looks gray. You can stop right here or if you like darker caramel like myself, go a little bit more. Take a very close look here. Once you start seeing smaller bubbles on the surface like this, this is the sign you need to stop because the caramel gets very dark quickly after that. And once it gets too dark, you cannot fix it. Keep in mind that the caramel gets slightly darker with the remaining heat before you add heavy cream. Remove from heat quickly and add a vanilla pot and about one third of heavy cream right away. Once it's lovely mixed, add the rest, just like how we did with the dry caramel. Compared to dry caramel, wet caramel is thinner and blend with cream a bit easier. Add salt and heat up one more time just to make sure everything is melted, just like the dry caramel. And this is how it looks like at each temperatures. It's a small difference, but it's slightly thinner than dry caramel. Now, when you want to make lighter caramel, do not add a cream too fast, like right here. Heat up a little bit more. Now, this is dark enough to add heavy cream, but keep in mind that the lighter the color is, the sweeter your caramel sauce gets. So I go a little bit more. I added cream when the color was orange and do the less exactly same as darker caramel sauce. Tell me which one you personally like. 
Darker caramel has more depth in flavor, which I personally prefer, but if you burn too much, it'll get too bitter and sour, so be careful. It is a very small difference, but the caramel sauce is slightly thinner than dark caramel. And when you add butter, add it after you add heavy cream, just like the dry caramel. And this is how the wet caramel with butter looks like. Again, compared to the one without butter, it is slightly thinner when it's hot and slightly firmer when it's cold. So to conclude, by using the same amount of ingredients, wet caramel is slightly softer than dry caramel and caramel sauce with butter is slightly thinner when it's hot and slightly firmer when it's cold and also the flavor is more mild. But the softness of caramel sauce can easily get adjusted by adding more or less heavy cream. So in the end, although there are some differences between the two methods, they are not major and totally adjustable. So I encourage you to pick whichever you like. If you are new to them, you can also try both and see which one you like better. And nothing beats warm homemade caramel sauce with ice cream and some toasted nuts on top. Enjoy this amazing caramel sauce with any desserts or drinks you like. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please let me know and share it with your baking friend. Enjoy pastry living and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.